Anybody? Anyone else? Anyone. Do you uh, do you read contemporary comics like the whole sort of like all the new issues come out on Wednesday kind of thing? I read. Uh, what do I read? I read a lot. I mean. You mean contemporary, like comic books, as opposed to graphic novels? Well, whatever, anything. Uh, I read a ton of comics. Um, comic book wise, I you know, I, I read those Grant Morrison books, uh, and not a lot else on the superhero front. But you know, I read uh, whenever Chris Ware puts out a new issue of Acme or Dan Klaus, and I love Johnny Ryan's Prison Pit, and. Uh, <laughs> That's a, that's a comic. Um, <laughs> uh, Seth's uh, George Sprott was was great. Um, you know, a, a lot of the usual suspects, I mm-hmm. suppose. Um, you know, it's it's funny. There's not much of an underground anymore. It's like, what do you what are your you know? I read a lot of what Fantagraphics and D and Q puts out, and what Pantheon puts out, and uh, Body World, uh, but. Um, Pamphlet wise, is this, I don't I don't read much. Do you? Well, I have my geeky things, superhero things that I read. I yeah, I I'm kind of addicted and fascinated to to Grant Morrison too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole thing he's been doing with Batman and Robin for the past year to me has just been like I've been reading that so fascinating. Yeah. Um, and his Superman was amazing. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, um, yes. Full disclosure, I designed the logo for it. <laughs> um, it a beautiful book. Um, where was I going with this? Uh, I find for me, I mean, you talk about there's no underground anymore, uh, but for, for me, what, what I'm very slowly, very slowly coming around to is the whole webcomic thing. Oh, yeah. Um, where for me, for years, you know, webcomics were done by people who couldn't get a real publisher so they scanned it all and put it on the web and by and large the quality as far as i was concerned wasn't there and i think that started to turn around i mean i've like personally published now two books that started out on on, right. on the web and so i don't know i do try to keep an open mind i yeah i don't i should do more. I mean, I I like that Kate Beaton. No clue. Stuff. Uh, no clue. Uh, history comics, very funny, gag-driven history comics that, that are that are good. Um, but no, I, I haven't explored it that much, and I probably should more. But uh, I don't know. Like you, it's hard to sit in front of the computer longer than is necessary. Right. But um, but I guess that is an area that's kind of the easiest way to have a growth area in comics right now. I mean, otherwise, mini comics are dying pretty pretty rapidly and uh yeah the web is, is probably probably the best best place for it these days i mean i'm starting to see more like it's like a testing ground to build up a fan base yeah. and then publish your book yeah and uh, that actually seems like a plan to me you know? it's a good plan because you give it away for free for a while and, and then, then you then stop <laughs> presumably you stop uh and um and it does allow, and also the serialization factor helps a lot. It seems to help artists just turn those pages out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're doing a 300-page book, it's hard to conceive of doing it all at once. So you put them online as you mm-hmm. go, and, and, and you build up an audience at the same time, and it can really work, yeah. I remember as a, reading comic books as a kid in the 50s. I also remember the comics had huge circulations of a million. What is the average circulation of the average comic book now? That is a very good question, and not no one that DC or Marvel would be very interested in answering. Um, <laughs> uh, 75,000, 75,000. I mean, I know back in the 50s, the, the circulation was like a half a million, a yeah. million. Well, I, um, now, that's, I don't know. That's My, over. Here's a plug for me. Um, <laughs> my next coffee table book is coming out also from Abrams in October, and it's about the golden age of Captain Marvel, and uh, who I'm a, a character I'm a huge fan of. But basically, he, that character and his company, Fawcett, became a victim of his success because 
What was at, his circulation? His circulation was back three, in the 40s. three million copies a month. I, I, I expect mean, that it back was, in the 40s it was the golden it age. Was, in the early 50s also, a lot of the comics had circulations of a million or more. Right, right. I mean, it was like... What is the, what is the current... You know, circulation today, because right. I'm, I'm not quite sure what... what it's, it's a fraction. Way like, down. It's a Superman, fraction like of Superman what it used to be. Superman and Batman, what is the current circulation oh, of Superman and Batman? It all depends, and it varies. Like I said, like this Grant Morrison Batman and Robin thing that he's doing right now is very popular comparatively. So maybe, what, 100,000 copies a month? Um you know, and there's all you could anal you could analyze it to death. I mean, back then, the, 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 your entertainment as a child for ten cents was very limited. Um, yeah. And yeah. and uh, but but just to finish it out, you know, Captain here was Captain Marvel selling three million copies a month. Let's say Superman was selling one point five, and National Periodical Publications, who published Superman, decided uh, we're going after you. And um, because he has a cape and he's all powerful and has dark hair, I mean, they 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 would grasp at anything. And this went on almost from Captain Marvel's inception. And uh, the interesting thing for me is that I, doing this book, I hadn't sort of reflected on the fact that Captain Marvel only lasted thirteen years. Really? It oh, was. God. It started in 1940, and it was done by 1953, huh. and Fawcett just gave up, because wow. the numbers were going down. Wow. I'm sure the numbers were great compared to today, but they were going down, and they were in and out of court every couple of months. It was just... Amazing. It was just... No, the companies were no, fighting companies each other. Fighting. I mean, it's actually kind of like a, f a frightening metaphor. Um, so, so they yeah. think that Superman was based on Captain Marvel. No, they based the Captain Marvel was based on Superman, oh, oh, and so anyway, but but it it woke me up a to the fact that Captain Marvel really wasn't around that long, yeah. um, really. and that uh, <laughs> the whole story is just so bizarre and kind of disturbing because <laughs> then eventually DC bought Captain Marvel and brought back CC Beck in the seventies and. Some would argue they've never been literally able to recapture the magic. No. I mean, they keep trying, no. but they, they, why won't this character work now? And it just kind of doesn't. It doesn't work. It, uh, well, it was a great writer and artist combination and hard to recapture, right? Yeah. I'm, like movies, yeah. You know, some movies you release it later, you miss the, you know, point in time which you can become popular. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Sure. Movies, they release it just the right time by Casablanca. Casablanca was... Just a few months right yeah. after the invasion of North Africa. So everyone wanted to see something about North Africa. I'd never thought of that. Right? No. No. At least a couple of months after the invasion oh, of North Africa. Yeah. So that's why, part of the reason why it was a great hit. Not only because it was a great movie, but because, you know, it's topical. Any other, um, any other questions? Thanks for doing this, Chip. Appreciate oh, please, it. Please, please. Uh, we want to uh, thank you all for, thank coming. You all for coming. I honestly thought we were going to outnumber you. I really did. <laughs> so hey. we appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Come on up and meet Danny Dell and Chip Kid. Thank you very much. All thank, you. thank you. Thank you.